Hey guys, I just wanted to do this quick video. I hope my arm isn't gonna like completely fall off, but I wanted to make this really quick for you guys because I was just on a call with a client and we were talking about a lot of stuff that I think is really gonna be beneficial to you guys. So we were talking about our ego and negative self-talk, where it all lives, you know, when we have those fear thoughts, stress thoughts, worry thoughts, and where do they come from? And we all know that they come from our ego. They come from that wounded part of ourselves, right, that's scared. Um, our ego wants to keep us stuck, and that's where all of these thoughts live. My arm is falling apart. I apologize. Um, so when we have those thoughts, those fear thoughts, obsessive thoughts, how do we get out of that place? And she said, you know, a lot of the times I'm self-parenting and it's working really well, and but there are times where the thought's just so convincing that it's really hard for me to like get out of it. It's so believable and I get entangled in it and then I get anxiety and then I get panic and like all that stuff and what do I do? And I said, you know, one of the things is once we realize like, once you realize you are not your thoughts, you have to really accept that, that you are not your thoughts and you can't attach to your thoughts. So when you have a negative thought, a worry thought, any kind of a thought and you start attaching to it and you start giving an emotional charge, then it's going to grow and it's going to manifest into anxiety and panic and things like that. But if you just notice like, oh, look, there's a fear thought, there's a stress thought and you don't attach and engage with that bully, that ego, that fear thought, then it just the fear subsides. But when we look at it head on and we engage in it, then it's going to grow and grow and grow. So what happens once it's growing, right? How do we kind of like make it go away at that point when it becomes a really big bully? One of the things is look at the thought. So look at your ego. And I, for some reason, I always think my ego is like sitting on the left of me. For some reason, I always want to say my ego is over here and like my good angels like over here. But turn and look at that part of yourself and really lovingly say to that part of yourself, why would you say that? Why would you say that? Why would you want to scare me like that? Why would you want to keep me in fear? You know, why, why are you saying things that are so hurtful? Why do you want to keep me stuck? You know, telling yourself like, why would you say that to me? That's so huge because if you ask yourself a question, you're going to get an answer no matter what the question is and no matter what part of yourself you're talking to. So if you ask yourself, why would you say that to me? Why are you trying to hurt me? Why would you say things that scare me like that? If you're very honest with yourself, something's going to come up from your ego that sounds something like, I'm scared. I'm nervous. I don't know what's going to happen and I'm really scared about it. And your ego will start to be a little bit vulnerable with you. It'll start to like show you like, okay, where are my wounds really? And that's your opportunity to love that part of yourself. So when we, when your ego starts becoming vulnerable and you, instead of fighting the ego and challenging it and saying, why would you say that? Or judging it. Oh my God, I can't believe, look at you. You're saying these things like, or not validating something, right? And just really sitting in that space of judgment and or engaging in it, right? Engaging in the the self the negative self-talk that you're having. When those things happen, again, you're feeding into that. But when you look at it with love and you say, why would you say that? Why would you want to keep me stuck? Why would you want to be so hurtful to me? That part of you... So when you start saying these things to your ego and it subsides and it starts to become real with you and vulnerable with you, then you're able to really get to like the point where you can parent yourself. And when you have that ego, that wounded child, and it's being honest with you, it's saying, I'm scared. I'm really scared. Like, I don't, I don't know why I'm saying these things. I'm just really nervous and scared. That's when you really love yourself. That's when you become the adult and you take charge of the situation and you let that inner child or that ego know that you're running the show. And that's your opportunity to look at that part of yourself that's scared and that's being vulnerable with you to tell you that it's scared. And that's when you offer it love. And you look at that part of you like you would anyone that you love in your life, whether that's a friend, a mother, sister, brother, child, it doesn't matter. If someone that you really love came to you and was honest and vulnerable and real with you and said, look, I'm, I'm scared. Like, I'm really nervous. Like, I'm scared of what the future is going to be and all of those things. What would you say to your friend? Would you say, yeah, I know, I'd be pretty scared too. Or would you be 
loving and kind and nurturing to your friend or your child or mother or whatever and say, I know you're scared and I understand, you know, but right now in this moment, we don't have anything to be scared of, right? And that you are so capable of creating such an amazing life that don't allow fear to take over and that you're a great human being. And you would start really saying all of these things to help boost this person up. That's what you need to start doing for yourself is being your own cheerleader, your own motivational speaker, your own life coach and saying those things to yourself. And when the ego kind of like starts breaking down and says, I'm scared and this is why I'm saying these things to just terrify you and worry you, then that's your opportunity to say, oh, I got him. He's being vulnerable or she's being vulnerable and I'm about to take over. I'm about to be the adult and take over the situation. So I hope that that helps you guys just understand like the ego a little bit better. So if you have any questions, comments, don't forget to leave them down below. Don't forgive this. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. So I hope that helps you guys understand the ego and how it works a little bit better. Sorry for the shaky cam. This was so random that I just wanted to make this. So I'm, I don't have my production studio ready for you guys, but I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got some good stuff out of it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I will see you later on next week.